So it is 1.44 a.m. It is Friday, so happy early Frisky Fetish Friday to y'all. So I got one movie to run off, and it is 2003's 13. Yeah. I watched this just a little while ago because my friend, my bestie Chris was watching it, or well, re-watching it because she loved it. And I was curious about it. And I'd seen it referenced, uh, where the hell was it? I think it was on Facebook another time. I was like, hmm, interesting. So, here's my thoughts. Never saw it before, but she did, so I wanted to check it out for myself, because I like new shit. And damn, them huffing a can of air together and punching each other, it was too funny. <laughs> That's good shit. This is serious nostalgia for me, because I remember the clothing trends, Evie being the hot girl magnet of the school, and also remembering that Jim Fitzgerald was that at mine. Uh, Tracy's room is nice, and I have my walls decorated like that, too. That's it. My, even my cousin Mandy had her walls plastered with Hanson posters back then. Uh, and Tracy's a poet. Neat. I love that poem, too. Tracy's mom is an AA. <coughs> Oof. Along with being the neighborhood mom. Everybody likes neighborhood mom. They're the coolest. Ah, the peer pressure of puberty and appealing to the popular girl. Accurate. Evie's attractive, but definitely a troublemaker, though I like her hair more. Oh, yeah. A lot of the different hairstyles in this film I loved. They were so fucking good. And I remember a lot of them because when I was in middle school at the same time. Well, no, I was... When I was in middle school during their time, I remember a lot of them hairstyles. This came out in 03. I was a junior in high school, actually. Yeah. Uh, so much of this wouldn't fly today, but it is a product of its time and still trailblazing today. Telling the story from a girl's perspective is smart and edgy because it gives you the emotional, psychological, and mental sides of a girl coming into puberty easily and teens. Plus what she'll do to fit in. Uh, shame there isn't a film for guys like this because on the guy side of things, there's nothing but hypersexualized shit. Never any peer pressure that I can recall. I really don't know any. Uh, I think the only one that I can think of is heavyweights. That's it. <laughs> Unless there's more, and I never really. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, heavyweights, boy erased. Um. Yeah, I can't think of any other ones. That's sad. That's really sad. And it's not a diss on this shit either. It's just, I'm surprised there's not, you know? Damn, stealing shit, stealing shit. Classic. I used to steal a lot back in my 20s. Ooh, ooh, I stole a lot. Magazines, toys, food, drinks. Never money, though. No. In two, well, no, I did it once or twice. <laughs> In 2003, though, I was uber shy, plus also coming out of my shell more. Yeah. Tracy's mom hooking up with an ex. Ugh, so bad when it comes to recovery and AA. Yeah. And Brady's in a halfway house, too. Jeremy Sisto, to me, is underrated, and he did get the shine more properly in Law & Order, plus other outings. Like, he was always... I'm trying to think. He was lumped in with Jeremy London... Uh, yeah, Jeremy London, Jeremy Sisto, Jonathan Brandis, um, I'm trying to remember all the attractive ones back then, all the males from Smallville, um, but yeah, like, he get, they get lumped in with all these other ones, and then it's like, oh, who's the real sh uh, shining star here? It's difficult, but eh, it happens. <laughs> Body glitter. That takes me back to middle school. I oh my. <laughs> because back then they had body glitter spray and shit. Yeah, the girls were so into that shit. Oh my god. I remember all that shit. Fucking Roxy brand jeans, LEI, low rise jeans. Um, <clears throat> Christ. Bracelets, necklaces, all that shit. Body flaunting, all that. Crazy. Fuck yeah, pineapple pizza. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Love that shit. 
Teen smoking and getting high with older kids. Definitely still a trend. It is. Teens today are like, don't do that. And then, yeah, sure. I like this movie. I really do. Oh, totally relate to Tracy mad at her mom for fucking Brady. This is just like Ginger Snaps, vastly underrated and a cult classic. Tracy ditching her friends to gain popularity status. That's sad, but understandable. No, yeah, it's so sad. The tongue piercer talking about eating her out. <laughs> uh, you know, Tracy's mom reminds me of Krista with her attitude and demeanor. Yeah. And all the women I've been around growing up have been very insightful for me through the years. From my hairstylist, uh, oh, what was her fucking name? Oh, damn it, I can't think of her name. Not Carol. Fuck. Suzanne. That's it, yeah. Suzanne to Crystal to Dawn to Irene. <sighs> Karen. Who else? <sighs> there were a lot of them growing up that really stood out and really educated me in different ways. Fuck. I learned so much. I'm grateful for what I've learned. Holy fuck. Oof. <laughs> yep. And the one thing Suzanne taught me when I had hair. <laughs> yeah, because she used to uh, style my afro and stuff. Um, she taught me that you don't need to need to wear makeup to be beautiful. And she never wore makeup not once in her fucking life. And she looked amazing. Yeah. Love that shit. Uh, and I wonder how much of Evie's abuse is a lie and truth. I do wonder that, because some girls that age will lie about shit just to get their way. I mean, hell, even today in their 30s, they'll do that. Even older. Tracy made about Brady leaving his clothes. Also understandable, along with her parents being divorced. Yeah. <laughs> Sewing needle piercings. Absolute old school. God. I remember that because when you did it earwise, it was with an ice cube to numb it and then needle through. Yeah. Never worried about infections. Nope. Never. Oh, man. Because I remember that shit. Like, I remember a lot of the girls that I was into back then. They did that shit. They went to either Claire's or they went to Bonton or they had their mom do it for them at home. They didn't give a shit. They had fun with that. Tracy's mom being a good seamstress with the leopard fur is gnarly. That was good shit. Excellent work. I like that. Tracy's a cutter. I didn't see that coming. I did not. Clever outfit change on Evie going to see KK. <laughs> I remember them days, man. Shit. Because a lot of them didn't give a shit. They would switch out so quick. I'm like, damn. Uh, Evie's wearing Tracy's leopard fur jeans. Stealing shit. Uh, Tracy and Evie making out, drinking, and her blowing hobby. Man, yeah, my generation did that too. Yeah. Seeing the eager fear in Javi's eyes. Uh, I remember that feeling. Yeah, I do. Oof. Tracy saying, if everybody married someone from a different race than one generation, there'd be no prejudice. How true that is today. And she ain't wrong. And that shit applies no matter what fucking year you watch this shit. Because, God. <laughs> As a biracial man, I approve of that sentiment. Because I am mixed, in case you didn't know that. Mixed babies are the cutest ever. Yeah, they used to be adorable. I had... Big curly fro hair, and I was adorable. I was so sweet and kind, and now I'm just a grizzly old bastard who has no fucking deal. <laughs> Kidding, I'm doing great. Not really. <laughs> also, Tracy and Evie making out with their BFs together, that's rare too, but also a competition between each other. Like, who's gonna go further? Who's gonna chicken out? Yeah, last time I heard about that was with my friend Emmy. And her friend Stephanie. Emmy broke the damn bed. <laughs> True story. 
Uh, I also recall a convo I had on Facebook where an older woman brought up a time where her and two friends shared her husband before they got married. I was very surprised by that. That was back in the 50s. <laughs> Crazy. Even strutting around with her thong out. <sighs> I miss those days. Oh, my. Yeah, when I was younger, women, girls did not give a fuck. <laughs> they did not. When puberty hit, they didn't give a shit. <laughs> God. And the introduction of the thong during the 2000s was a massive boost in hypersexualization for women. <laughs> I mean, it goes to the old adage, sex sells. <sighs> so sad. And Cisco made that a hit song. <laughs> God. Mm. Evie wanting Luke ain't surprising. That's all hormones and wanting a new sex experience. It's surprising how provocative this is for 2003. Yeah, it really is, because I was surprised by that. The last film I know of from back then that pushed the envelope was Wild Things in 99. And Poison Ivy in 92. <laughs> and I just realized that Old Boy came out around this time, too. Same fucking year. <laughs> wow. Luke almost had a threesome with Tracy and Evie. Hoo-hoo. And I can guarantee if this came out today, Twatter would explode on everything out of context. <laughs> totally. But what I like about this movie is it's how it's no hold Bart. No holds Bart. I love that. And naturally, people probably complained about it when they themselves probably have worse skeleton in their closet they don't want revealed. Happens. Usually the loudest motherfucker in the room has the most to hide. Tracy's mom being worried about how she's turning out, that's hard when you're a single mom trying to make it work. And I know many single moms, and yeah, it is difficult. It, you want to know how hard life is? Talk to a single mom sometime. Seriously, sit down and ask them how hard it is. They'll tell you in detail. You think you're doing good by them, but they're changing right before your eyes, and you've lost control over them. It sucks, but that's puberty in life. I vaguely remember that fact about chickens not moving their heads from school. I think I remember that shit, because I saw that happen once. And I was like, damn. Damn, Mason found out about Tracy's piercing and thong wearing. Ooh. I do like Tracy's hair with braids. I miss that hairstyle in particular. One, it reminds me of Viking hair, because Vikings do that. And thankfully, some hairstylists, hairstylists I follow have brought that back. Yeah, I love it. Evie definitely blew Javi while Tracy was looking for her. Definitely. Oh, he spilled soda on his pants. Then after you gobble down his dick. Slut. <laughs> I wonder what the mark was on Evie's back earlier. And also Astrid saying her ass was like double cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, more like double cheeseburgers that got punched by an employee at McDonald's. <laughs> Tracy blowing up at her mom. Massively relatable. Done that with Beck many times. Ugh. Mel having a meltdown. Irony. In the kitchen, tearing the cereal and tile floor up because she's at wit's end is sad. And here's something I learned watching that. I now understand why Crystal punched a hole in her wall all those years ago when I asked about it. Because I was at her house years ago. And I was like, what happened here? And when I asked one of Court's friends, said Crystal happened. And Crystal laughed and nodded about it. And I'm like, and I was like she's like, that's right. And I was, when she laughed... Now I get it. I really get it. And that hurts. A lot. Another piece of the past revealed. Not the pay, not a piece I wanted, but fuck. Now I get it. <sighs> Brady having Mel get a shower to calm down or go get high is deep. Mel's got great nipples, though. I like them nipples. Tracy calling Brady a cokehead while he's trying to help her with the bed. That's rough. Mel discovering Tracy's piercings, thong, and attitude is culture shocking for her. Not to mention Tracy singing, no bra, no panties, keeps pushing at Mel's sobriety. Yeah. Brady leaving, I get that because that's a toxic environment that you can't heal in. 
the schism between Tracy and her dad is sad. I feel for him wanting to know what's going on in a nutshell. I'm the same fucking way. I gotta know in detail or one sentence what's wrong and what I can do to fix it. Or just listen. Sometimes it's just listening. I am unhelpful without full context. Like, if you're just gonna think, oh, somebody hit me. Why? How? Where? When? Did you like it? Did you start it? The broken home dynamic is so strong in this. I like that. I hate that dynamic, but at the same time, it's so relatable. Ugh. So Evie's uncle molested her when she was nine and pushed things into her and into a fire. It's rough. Fuck. Tracy pushing for her mom to let Evie live with them. I remember a few people who had that going on growing up. Mostly because they got along so well and had multiple sleepovers, family gatherings, or their parents were super supportive versus their birth parents. Damn, Evie clocked Tracy good. <laughs> she clocked her ass good. Fuck. Uh, Evie's uncle really did abuse her and got sentenced to seven years. Damn. Color me shocked. Uh, Tracy and Evie's outfits. <laughs> Some dumbass shit. <laughs> God. But inventive, though. Like, it's some funny shit. Uh, Brooke had work done on her ears, and Evie's not getting adopted. Oof. Uh, it's rough. Man, Tracy's grades are dropping bad. And I like the lighting changes, too. Massive highlight of this movie. Oh, snap. Morley cigarettes. <laughs> Same brand CSM smoked on the X-Files. And Morley cigarettes themselves have a cinematic history of themselves. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Going all the way back to the 60s. <laughs> I was surprised. I was like, wow. They're connected to a lot of things now. Connected to 13. So now this connects to X-Files. It's the Morley cigarette universe. <laughs> now we have a new MCU. Fuck Marvel. Mm, Evie got busted by Brooks, so Tracy did too. <sighs> Damn. Massive blow up between them and Mel kissing her cuts while holding her tight. That is the heaviest part of this film. Fuck. And it goes to show that she loves her daughter and her son more than she could ever know. And never stopped loving her. No matter what she did, she still loves her. Evie lying about things is so accurate when things go wrong. Yeah. I like Katie Rose's Lemon Song. Definitely adding that to my playlist here in a little bit. Good shit. I'm glad I watched this because, man, it's really fucking good, but so damn polarizing. It's like one of those that, like, you really can't believe it, and you watched it, and you're like, I gotta see this again. Uh, it's films like this that pays away for future titles like Minogue... Meganones, aka cuties, and edgier content in the future. But even in the past, there were others like this that pushed farther or further. Yeah. Top ones being, you know, Poison Ivy, Wild Things, Showgirls, Bastard of Carolina, um, what was he? Oh, The Crush. Especially The Crush. Oof. That's one of my favorite films, too. I love that thing. Because, um,. Yeah, Carrie. Yeah, Carrie's in it. I was gonna say Reed Diamond. <laughs> they look alike, but it's not who I'm thinking. I was like, it's Carrie. Uh, I've seen my fair share of those, but this ranks high for me, easily. And even American History X. Like people, when you watch this, you'll see it for shock value at first. But if you see the deeper layers and get the story and shit, you understand where it's coming from. Great then you're okay. But if you're the type that just sees it for, you know, shock value and it disagree it's something you don't like, it's offensive to you, then you're you won't get it. You really won't. <sighs> yeah. Kinda wanna own it too. And I didn't even recognize Evan Rachel Wood. <laughs> nope. My only intro to her was Westworld. I loved her on Westworld. So good. The fact it's loosely based on Nikki's life is even more eye-opening, too. I mean, this is a top ten fave for me, personally. Easily. Props on having actual teens in the rules, too. 
<laughs> what a rough, funny, hard-hitting film. 11 out of 10. So, if you like 13, you watched this the first time and you were like, wow, relatable. Or if you're like, wow, that's offensive. <laughs> then, yeah, you can enjoy this or hate it. So, check it out. See how you feel. Go from there. So, I'm going to get off here, chill, and go to the bathroom. Till next time, like and subscribe for thoughts and prayers.